Good morning, Prairie Lutheran. Good morning. What a what a delightful day this is. This is the day the Lord has made, and let us be rejoicing and glad in it. As I look up into the heavens and the sky, once again, God has blessed us with his canopy of grace as we can come together and worship in God's cathedral. What a delight it is that these Sundays are so pleasant for us to come together. As we are here together, I want to invite you to join me with our service as we begin with a wisdom recitation. This is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is he who does not walk in the steps of the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. We have been blessed to be planted by the word of Jesus Christ so that we might, with our leaves, love one another. Our service continues as we hear our opening song. So great to worship in spirit and truth with you this morning as we gather with worship in a song. Though my tears may fall, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. In the dead of night, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. When the waters rise, I'll lift my eyes, I'll lift my eyes to you. While there's hope in There is strength when I say I will 
Thank you, Jonathan and band. Great to see and hear all of you this morning. We've got a full, full praise band. And Ensley, thank you for rocking it at the front here, praising the Lord with your whole self. We love that. I invite you to stand as you are able as we continue our service of a time of confession and forgiveness. Words taken from the prophet Daniel, the ninth chapter. Let us confess. Lord, our great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commandments and laws. We have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and princes and to our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord God, hear us as we take now moments of personal reflection. Amen. Our Heavenly Father delights when his children come before him with hearts open and confess our sins before God. But God, who is gracious and merciful, delights not only in hearing but also announcing this word which is as a called and ordained pastor of the Church of Christ, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. As forgiven people, I invite you to give a, a wave or a air, air hug to those who are near you and uh, give thanks to God for his wonderful gift of mercy and forgiveness, amen. You may be seated. Our service now continues with the word of the Lord this day. Good morning. What beautiful sunshine today. Such a, such a gift. Our reading today is from Ezekiel. Ezekiel's name literally means God will strengthen. At age 25, that's, that's my age, he was one of 3,000 Jews exiled to Babylon. His calling was to be a prophet appointed by God to call the people back to God through repentance. The gift of repentance has the potential to lead to reconciliation, as wrongs are admitted and we turn around and live in a new direction. For this communion weekend, we will focus on repentance and respond to the call of Ezekiel. Our reading today comes from Ezekiel 33 verses 7 through 11. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, you wicked person, you will surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade them from their ways. That wicked person will die for their sin. And I will hold you accountable for their blood. But if you do want the wicked person to turn from their ways and they do not do so, they will die for their sin, though you yourself will be saved. Son of man, say to the Israelites, this is what you are saying. Our offenses and sins weigh us down and we are wasting away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? Here ends the reading. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. My name is Miss Melanie. I'm delighted to do a children's message with you this morning. If you are a kid out there, I would love for you to wave to me. Oh, I see Henry. I see this Hattie here. No, I see Hannah and Ensley and Kellen. Hey, guys. 
Is Taj back there? I think I see Taj in the back. Yay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, I have, uh, I think we should play a game. We've played a game the last couple times and um, I love games. Do you love games? Yes. Okay, we're gonna play a game. This is the game of all games. You probably know this one. And this is the game that settles every dispute. You probably know the game already. We're gonna play rock, paper, scissors. I was wondering if I could have anyone, I need some volunteers to come on up. Come on up, Kellen, Knox. <gasps> come on up, honey. Come on up and let's play. Oh, okay, let's give them a let's give them a hand. It's kind of brave. Come on up here. Yeah. Uh, I think we should have a rock paper scissors game. Gosh, way to go, guys. All right, come on up. Let's face these guys. We want we need them to they need to see your hands. Let's face uh let's face our friends out here. Perfect. Thank you for socially distancing. That's amazing. Good job, guys. All right, and. You guys know how to play, right? Rock, paper, scissors? You know how to play this? Yeah. Um, everybody knows how to play. If they don't know how to play, they're gonna watch you and learn. So, I don't have my hands free. You guys are gonna have to do it for me. I'll say it though. All right, let's get our hands out like this. Let's get ready. Rock, paper, scissors, but I'm just saying it. We're gonna say it together in just a minute. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, go. Rock, paper, scissors, go. All right, we got Rock, we got paper. All right, that was a little practice. Are you ready to, ready to do it again? Rock, paper, scissors, go. Oh, we got rock and scissors. Rock, cover, scissors, right? Let's do it one more time. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Oh, paper and paper. Now is the time. Usually the third time, you kind of get what the other guy's doing, and then you win the game, right, every time. All right, that was good. That was good. Now, I want you to put your hands together like this. Can you do that? Almost like paper, but you're folding your hands. Perfect. Can you hold it out so everyone can see? Can the big kids in the crowd do this together too? Yep, like you're praying almost, right? You have your hands together. I was thinking about the verses that we just heard from Ezekiel, and he was talking about repentance and reconciliation. Those are big adult words, big adult words. But here's what I think Ezekiel is talking about relationships god loves relationships and every relationship is like this can you show your hands again it's like this like you're folding hands right there's two people in a relationship relationships are kind of like this and god designed relationships to go together but here's the thing we all fall short we all sin maybe sometimes we say words that are unkind maybe sometimes we even use our hands to sin we all fall short. Raise your hand if you've ever gotten in trouble. Ooh, calling you out. Oh gosh, look at those hands fly up. Oh, especially these guys. These guys are, their hands flew up first. Some of these, oh wait, let's see. Raise your hand if you've ever gotten in trouble. Oh, look at all those hands, guys. Look at all those hands. Yeah, everybody falls short. So back to your hands together. Can you put your hands together again? Like you're, like you're praying, like they're, in relationships, whenever we maybe sin against someone else, which is which is pretty often, here's what happens. It's it's like they break apart. Can you break your hands apart and hold it apart? In relationships, when we sin against other people and when we sin against God, it breaks our relationships apart. And now, wait a minute. If you've ever gotten in trouble, say you did something to your brother or your sister, what do your parents help you learn how to do? What do, what do they tell you to do? Can you say that again, honey? MJ, don't go away. That's right. Your mom says, MJ, don't go away. I love that. I love that. Your mom and dad are probably teaching you how to say sorry, right? Your mom and dad teach you how to say sorry. Do your mom and dad say, I'm sorry I did this? And then do they teach you to also, if you've done something wrong, say, will you please forgive me? Or I forgive you. They're teaching you those things, right? They're teaching you about relationships. So when we sin against another person, when we're, met, when we're not nice to another person, and we break that relationship apart, saying sorry helps, right? Saying sorry kind of brings those hands closer together. Yeah, and that is what we're talking about when we talk about that big word of repentance. That's turning and saying sorry to God. And you know what's so cool? Can you put your hand out like this? Can you put your hand out like this? Awesome. With 
Jesus, because of the cross and because of what Jesus did to us, God always has his hand ready to forgive us. He always forgives us, which is pretty amazing. Sometimes I think people don't always have their hands out. In fact, when someone does something wrong to you or bad to you, you kind of remove your hand a little bit, right? God never does that. God always has his hand out waiting for you to say, I'm sorry, God, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Help me do better next time. All right, let's keep our hands out and let's do a prayer. Will you guys pray with me? Let's close our hands and let's close our hands. Let's close our eyes and talk to God. All right, let's keep our hands out. Heavenly Father, we praise you this day and we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you that you are a God of forgiveness. You forgive us. You keep your hand out to us. What a gift. What an amazing thing. Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to remember when we make mistakes, which we always do, help us to remember to say sorry and turn from those mistakes so that we can come back together in our relationships and in our heart. Thank you, God, that you made us, love us, and sent your son Jesus to be our very best friend. In Jesus' name, all the boys and girls said, amen. amen. All right, friends, thank you guys so much for coming out. Will you guys give them a round of applause? They did a good job. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Melody. So my daughter is learning to say I'm sorry, and so she says I'm sorry, and she says the dog did it though. So she, she apologizes on behalf of the dog. So she still got some learning to do with this whole repentance thing. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who forgives us time and time and time again. So there's this phrase in psychology uh, that sounds really straightforward, but it turns out it might be the complete opposite of what it's actually trying to say. And that's this, learned helplessness. Now, learned helplessness is about as sad as it sounds. So the initial researchers back in the 60s had two dogs in a room. And each of those dogs was wearing a collar and so there was a lever on one of the walls. Both dogs uh, received a shock from their collar at the same time. And when the first dog would eventually paw at the lever that was on the wall, the shocks would stop for that dog. But when the second dog went and pawed at that lever, when that, same, when that second dog did the exact same action, the shocks did not stop. Nothing, nothing happened. And so eventually that first dog learned that pushing that lever would stop the shocks, and the second dog learned that there was nothing that they could do to stop those shocks, that it was all random when the shocks started, and when they stopped. And so then those two dogs were placed in a second experiment. And it was a room that was divided into two. On one, the floor on one side of the room would give the dogs a shock and the floor on the other side of the room didn't give the dogs a shock. So they were free from being shocked. And what the researchers saw was that that first dog, the one who had learned that they had the ability to stop those shocks, a dog would take that leap of faith and jump to that second side of the room and found out that there was safety from the shocks on that other side of the room. But that second dog, the second dog, they never even tried jumping. So that second dog had learned that stopping the shocks was out of their control, so they didn't even sniff at that other side of the room. They had seemingly learned to be helpless. They learned that the world was chaotic and out of their control. But that's not actually the case. I don't think we need to learn that the world is chaotic and out of our control. I think we can agree that that's nearly common sense. That we don't have control over, say, a Category 4 hurricane or wildfires or whether or not this afternoon is going to be good or bad. So we don't need to learn to be helpless. I think that's ingrained and I have some some evidence to present for you this morning because my three-year-old again has this helpless routine down to a T. In fact I would say that Hazel doesn't need any encouraging to act helpless. That is her default. So the change is pushing her to be 
helpful. And so that's how she ends up uh, wearing mismatched socks with different shoes and a skirt and a dress on all at the exact same time for good measure. So what those dogs were learning was helpfulness. They were learning how to change their circumstances. They were learning how to get themselves out of a bad situation. They were learning how to move from point A to point B in order to affect change. But my goodness, that is difficult. Going from point A to, to point B, changing our perspectives, understanding that we have a role to play in changing our circumstances. I don't know about you, but I bristle at that thought because it's not our default. Okay, so I think, I think especially that I see a dog out in the audience here this morning, I think we need to use a happy dog metaphor now because that first one is just incredibly sad uh, from the 1960s. So the happy dog metaphor is this, my dog loves going for walks. The problem is I have two dogs. And so it's not that Lacey doesn't like walks per se, but more that she's just a little bit of a straggler. And if you ever see me out and about here in Eden Prairie, I've got a double leash for these two dogs, which works well because Kirby's just leading the charge and Lacey's kind of being pulled behind like the caboose. So I don't really have really much tension on my arms or really balancing each other out on walks. But there's absolutely one thing that my two dogs cannot stand, and that is turning around. They're good with going straight ahead. That, that's really straightforward. They're okay with maybe turning left or turning right. That, that's just as exciting. But there's, a, there's a reason I never do an out and back route. Again, they absolutely despise turning around. And so if you ever happen to walk these two creatures, whatever you do, do not tell them that they need to turn around. I mean, turning around just defeats the whole purpose of going for a walk, right? It's no longer this smooth sailing adventure. It's been interrupted. And that's the problem. It required a full stop and then a, a 180. Again, my pups are good with a zero degree turn, maybe a 90 degree turn here and there to mix it up. I'm sure they could even do a 360 if I, if I had them do that, but a 180. Because if there's any, any walkers or, or bikers or, or runners out here, if you burn a path, in the ground from following the same route time and, and time again and suddenly you change the direction you go on that route maybe you've noticed that that everything changes on that route but the simple act of following a path in a clockwise direction versus counterclockwise completely upends your perspective on that same exact landscape that you've always passed all because you stopped and you did a 1a Again, the problem is turning around. Because if we're turning around, that means we were headed in the wrong direction in the first place. And I don't know about you, but I don't like being told that I'm headed in the wrong direction. It means that I've wasted effort and I've wasted time. It means that whatever I set out to do in the first place was misguided. It means that I was flat out wrong. And that's that churchy word this morning, repentance. But that confession thing that we did about 10 or so minutes ago, that's repentance. Again, that funny little church word that when translated simply means to turn around. Metanoia. See, this place here, this is a place of brokenness. That if you are perfect, if you're whole, if you're free from anxieties or fears or self-doubt, then this probably isn't the place for you. Just like a hospital isn't for healthy people, we do not gather here this morning because we're perfect. Each of us are here this morning because we're sinners. And we gather here for worship to do our best to listen to the words of Scripture and see how they're pulling at us and tugging us to see what they're telling us. And this morning, it seems like the words are, are shouting at us. Now, Caroline, you didn't yell the scripture words at us uh, this morning, but the prophet Ezekiel seems to be just a whole bunch of frantic today. And Ezekiel's frantic because the message is urgent. He says that the world is broken. And where have the people been? Where have we been? So what's interesting about this watchman role is Ezekiel isn't there to judge the people. 
Ezekiel's not there to judge the people. It's about the people changing themselves. In his book, Just Mercy, Brian Stevenson shares just a beautiful metaphor for his work as a defense attorney. He describes himself as a stone catcher. Not a stone thrower, but a stone catcher. I love that imagery. I mean, imagine a Christianity that catches stones instead of, of throwing them. A place that recognizes we are all the same. We are all sick with sin. We are all broken. Again, if you're perfect, then perhaps you're in the wrong place here this morning. But as we are sick with sin, as we are broken, that is where Jesus Christ steps in. Because Jesus loves broken people. Jesus loves forgotten people. Jesus loves lost people. Jesus sees us just as we are and surrounds us with faith and love and peace and perhaps most importantly, with forgiveness. Now once we've received all those things, once we've received faith and love and hope and forgiveness, that doesn't make us perfect. In fact, even if it, after you've heard that word of forgiveness and love, you still might feel scared or scarred or anxious or full of doubt from time to time. But that just makes Jesus show up all the more. If you remember back to last Sunday, we had a baptism just about right over, right over here to my, to my left. And as I was pouring the water into the bowl, the handle, if you didn't notice, the handle on that pitcher just happened to break off. Now, I say that's a God thing, because how perfect is that imperfection? Now, the water that was being poured out of that pitcher that eventually broke, sure, there's some Jordan water in that pitcher, but for the most part, that water is just simply tap water. Ordinary water. And that ordinary water was poured out of a broken pitcher. And so with those ordinary and broken elements, Jesus showed up and claimed and marked Neo as a beloved child of God. I love that. But that is the beauty and promise of Jesus Christ this morning, that God shows up to the people of Israel and tells them the judgment is on the way. And Ezekiel, as the watchman, sounds the alarm that God and judgment are on the way. But then there's also this glimmer of hope and promise. Because this God of judgment is first and foremost a God of forgiveness, a God of love, a God of hope and peace. So this morning, this word repentance, to turn around, to confess, it's, it's not that others need to change, we ourselves need to change because we change others by changing ourselves we heal others by healing our perceptions of them we love others by understanding all the ways that they're broken just like we are and loving them all the more so jesus doesn't love you because you are perfect again as a church we are we're the patients. We're not the doctors or the nurses. See, Jesus, thankfully, has all those roles of healing handled. And so our job as we leave this place, as we leave this parking lot this morning, our calling is to find other patients like us, others who are broken and scarred and others who are left for dead by the world. To find them, hear them, see them, and love them. Not because they're perfect, not because we are perfect, but instead because we're ordinary. Just broken and flawed people who are still loved and forgiven by Jesus anyway. We're just people who are called to share that same love with our sisters and our brothers. Now to do all those things, to do all those very difficult things might take a change of perspective turning around to recognize that we in fact are ordinary and broken in the same way that people on the other side of the country or world or people even on the other side of the aisle are also broken like we are 
Because carrying this cross right over here, carrying that cross and following in the footsteps of Jesus is not our default. It's not our default to walk over there and pick up that cross and carry it as Jesus did. It's going to take a change of heart. It's going to take us recognizing that we are all ordinary and broken people. Imperfect people who have the gift of forgiveness from Jesus Christ. And this morning, that is all we need. Imperfect and ordinary and broken people who are forgiven by Jesus Christ. And that is perfect. Amen. Let's pray. Good and loving God, we ask that your Holy Spirit surround us each and every day. Crack open our hearts and our souls and our minds to, to stop, to pause, to breathe, and then to turn around to view the world and creation around us as, as you view it, to view our sisters and brothers both near and far, people who disagree with us, to view them with the same forgiveness and the love that you first showered and poured out on us, your people. Ordinary, broken, flawed people who are yet still forgiven and loved by you. To that we can say thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you, band, once again, as we are reminded to turn our eyes towards Jesus. This morning, I'd like to invite Melanie, Miss Melanie, to come on up and share our mission moment. Thank you, Melanie. Hello. Good morning again. In two weeks from today, we are moving indoors for in-person worship. Yes, right? Yeah. Yay, Ansley, I love it. Uh, because of the pandemic, we're taking seriously the need to manage our facilities so that people stay safe when we gather indoors. We'll have uh, hand sanitizing stations, uh, we'll require masks, we'll, we'll so social distance, and we are asking you if you will reserve your spot by going online on our website and reserving uh, spots. There's a res registration link for each service that you uh, will attend. Um, and this will help us with contact tracing and will help us manage our attendance as well. If you're not able to uh, come inside or if you do not intend to worship indoors with us on Sundays, that's okay. Uh, the 915 service will be filmed and streamed live via our websites, or via our Facebook uh, and YouTube platforms. These links will also be on our webpage. Thank you for your flexibility and faithfulness, no matter in person or remote, the Holy Spirit will gather us together and make us one. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Melanie, for sharing that good news that we all look forward to. Um, I can imagine on September 13th, it might just start snowing uh, as, as things happen, but we have been just so very blessed. Thank you, it's now time for our offering. And uh, I realize that uh, during the pandemic, we have not had our hospitality team graciously going through aisles with the brass plates and you congregation members have been so generous with giving your support for the Ministry of Prairie Lutheran Church, whether it's by mailing them in, uh, electronic giving or the green baskets that we have dispersed around the parking lot. We are so grateful and blessed uh, as together we make a difference for Jesus Christ's sake. Our service now continues with prayers, the prayers of the church and for the world. As you are able, I invite you to stand and let's pray together. Let us pray. Loving, living, light-filled God, thank you for making the world and everything that exists. In the morning when we arise, you have already sprung ahead to prepare the day the sun, the air, the ground beneath our feet are ready for us to behold and be alive in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you have made us brothers and sisters. Help us to live as a family of hope and hospitality. Help us to have hearts that are filled with joy and not fear. Let our words be kind and May your redeeming light shine in our actions and attitudes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, with healing in your wings, we lift up these people before your tender care. Jackie Oz, Father, Ralph Sandberg, Jared Spanbauer, and the family of Pastor Merrill Ronning, former pastor here at Prairie Lutheran Church, in the 1990s who passed away earlier this month. Here are also these names for whom we lift in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, we also pray for those who have been affected by Hurricane Laura and fires in California, as well as those who continue to suffer from the unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin and Minneapolis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This weekend marks the anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. This Christ-inspired dream has not been fulfilled, O Lord. And we pray that you would stir us up to walk for justice and work for healing in our diverse country. We continue to pray for first responders during the ongoing pandemic. And this week we pray especially for teachers and bus drivers, parents and students and all others as they juggle the challenges of beginning the school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all 
for whom we pray, trusting in the strong name of Jesus, our Shepherd and Savior. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our service now continues with Holy Communion. And we will be celebrating as we have in the past. We'll be able to use our wonderful individual units that have the wafer and the grape juice contained within them. And I'll give instructions in just a moment. But hear now the words of Jesus as he spoke to his disciples in the upper room. Our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, gathered with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem. And taking bread and giving thanks, he said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's join our voices as we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will once again have three stations for communion. One will be towards the middle of the parking lot. Uh, one is right up here towards the front. And then if you would like to, you can self uh, receive some uh, of these individual individual units. Pastor Bryant and I will be wearing gloves and there is hand sanitizer for you as well. What we ask you to do is to receive the uh, unit of communion and then return to your seat and then when everybody has received it I'll give instructions for the eating and the drinking of the elements. All is ready. The gifts of God for the people of God.
invite you to take your elements and if you can remove the very top layer where the host is and as you take that in your hands I invite you the body of Christ given for you let us eat and then remo removing the foil on top of the grape juice Sometimes easier said than done. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us drink. And now may the body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Our hospitality team has baskets that they'll be circulating through the parking lot and you can i uh, give them the uh, remaining pieces of plastic from your communion unit. Our service now concludes with our announcements and benediction. Thank you again for joining us here for worship on yet a beautiful Sunday morning. As part of Rally Weekend uh, on Sunday, September 13th, uh, we're having a pet blessing on Saturday. September 12th, uh, right here where I'm standing at 10 o'clock in the morning. So I know I've mentioned the pets and dogs a few times here this morning, and in a couple weeks we'll be, we'll be invited to bring your pets with you. Uh, I'm still debating if my two dogs are going to show up because then it's, it's just going to be a little bit of a disaster. Uh, I've got a cat as well, so if you can bring, if you have cats, they are more than welcome to come. If you can uh, bring them in a in a, in a crate. I've had cats in the past running throughout the sanctuary and then hiding under the altar, which is okay, I suppose. Uh, and dogs on leashes, uh, if you can. Uh, so <laughs> it does turn into that. So that pet blessing again, Saturday, uh, September 12th uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, right here in the parking lot. And as you're able, I invite you to stand uh, and receive now the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace this morning. Yeah.